Welcome into Dolphins Today. I'm your host, Will Scott, breaking down the newest news and rumors surrounding your Miami Dolphins. And on today's show, we're going to get into the JC to Miami rumors, as well as look at some other free agent offensive line options. We're going to close the show talking about Peter King and his NFL power rankings. Let's get into these free agents, though, in Bleacher Report put out an article yesterday. It was actually right before Jadavion Clowney signed with the Browns. Top 10 best free agents left. So we can cross Clowney off this list because he's going back to Cleveland. So here are their nine best free agents left available. Two names here that might be possible for Miami, and that's Akeem Hicks and Darrell Williams. Obviously, Williams would fill the bigger team need. You could slot him at right tackle. Let's get into these other names as well, looking at five through one. Rob Gronkowski would be a lot of fun, but it's a long shot. Obviously, the name that sticks out from this list is J.C. Treader. And in this same article, Bleacher Report named J.C. Treader as a potential fit in Miami. Now, the Jadavion Clowney signing is going to lead to more dominoes falling. There's still plenty of big-name free agents out there. It's not just J.C. Treader. So now that you take, who at the time was the best NFL free agent still on the board, Clowney, you take him off that board, and I think we're going to start to see some more big names here signing with teams in the near future, maybe even after the June 1st cuts. And we're going to keep you in the loop with all Miami Dolphins news and rumors so be sure to go down and hit that big red sub button now we just surpassed 25,000 subscribers let's get to 26 so subscribe right now in that article Bleacher Report listed three potential JC Treader destinations saying that these three teams are the best fit for JC Treader the New York Giants, the Minnesota Vikings, and the Miami Dolphins. And on Twitter, it's looking like the Vikings and the Dolphins, those fan bases want J.C. the most. I think, though, that Dolphins fans have proved that we want J.C. the most. Hashtag J.C. to Miami. How badly do you want the Dolphins to sign J.C. Treader? Go down in the comments. Scale it 1 to 10. It's the pinned comment on today's video. So when you're hit with an ad break, go down. Let me know how bad Sadly, you want J.C. to Miami to happen. Here is what Bleach Report said about J.C. Treader. Center might not be the most valuable position on the offensive line, but it's still surprising that there is one as good as J.C. Treader still on the market. Treader's departure from Cleveland had more to do with financials and little to do with his level of player health. He only gave up one sack last season. Now, the veteran center is set to enter his age 31 season, but health shouldn't be a concern. He has played in 16 games each of the last five seasons. Treader has a wealth of experience and will bring leadership and solid play to whatever team picks him up. He's a plug-and-play starter from day one who will be solid in pass protection and an asset in the run game. Listen to this. Anyone with questions on the interior would benefit from bringing him on board. And you know who has questions at the center position? The Miami Dolphins. And if the Dolphins sign J.C. Treader, I have word from our CEO here at Chat Sports, James Yoder, that we are going to go live. If I'm in studio, if I'm in studio and the Dolphins sign J.C. Treader, we are going to go live on Dolphins today. It is going to be a party. Hit that big red sub button. Even if I'm not in studio, we're still going to put out a video. But if J.C. signs and I'm in studio, we're going live right away. Neil Driscoll said this. He hosts the Fin Too Deep podcast. Dolphins have been monitoring veteran offensive linemen that are free agents. We all know J.C. Treader is available, but others to keep an eye on. He lists three names here. Riley Reef, Matt Paradis, and Billy Price. So let's talk about those three names. Riley Reef is someone that we've talked about a decent amount here on Dolphins today. He was Joe Burrow's right tackle last season, played over 700 snaps. He's a middle-of-the-road tackle. Now, 
I don't know about how I feel about signing him because Darrell Williams is, is by far the better option, but he would probably be an upgrade over who you have right now at right tackle, and that's either Liam Eikenberg or Austin Jackson. Matt Paradis might be a decent backup plan if you don't sign J.C. Treader. I think he's an upgrade over Michael Dieter. Middle-of-the-road center, ranked 16th on PFF last season among centers. The run block has to get a little bit better. And then Billy Price, uh, no, no. Do not sign Billy Price. Billy Price is not that much better than Michael Dieter. Honestly, I think I'd rather have Michael Dieter than Billy Price because Dieter might still have a little bit of potential. Yeah, maybe I'm being kind of Dieter saying that. Billy Price, though, 26th ranked center last season. Uh, no, sign J.C. Treader. But if you could pick one of these three to sign, go down in the comment section. Let me know who it is. Riley Reef type RR, Matt Paradis type MP, or Billy Price type BP. Out of those three, Riley Reef probably makes the most sense. However, if you don't sign J.C. Treader and they don't feel confident in Connor Williams or Michael Dieter to be the center, maybe a guy like Matt Paradis, who has been a, a quality center in the league for a long time, you can go out there and get him. Let's get into now Peter King's NFL Power Rankings. He released his NFL Power Rankings this morning, ranking teams 1 to 32. So where did the Miami Dolphins end up on this list? Let's get into it, starting at the top. The Buffalo Bills, number one. Not a surprise. I would agree with them there. The Rams at four, maybe a little bit low for the, depending, for the defending Super Bowl champs. They're not even the highest rated team in their own stadium. That'd be the Chargers. I mean, how can you put a team at number two that didn't even make the playoffs last season? I don't know about that. Let's get into six through ten. Tampa Bay makes the list. Even though the Bengals were in the Super Bowl last year, they rank number seven. Still no Dolphins in the top ten and no Dolphins in the top 15. This is a little bit low for me uh, as we get into the rest of the list here, 11 through 15. Saints come in at 11. They had a very good draft. The Titans have had an interesting offseason. They come in at 12. Dallas Cowboys, who have done absolutely nothing this offseason, come in at number 15. And then the Dolphins there at number 16. So really kind of smack dab in the middle there, 16th out of 32 teams. They are in front of the New England Patriots on Peter King's power rankings. How excited are you about the Dolphins' season? If you're just as excited as I am, I think my producer, Coop, pretty excited too about the Dolphins' season. Let's ride. Then give us a like on this video. If you're a Dolphins fan, if you're excited about what the Dolphins are going to do in the 2022 season, give us a like on this video. Kind of breaking down Peter King's power rankings, there's no way the Dolphins are behind the Eagles and the Saints. And my producer, Coop, was like, the Eagles are better than the Dolphins. No, they're not. The Dolphins have made better. Granted, the Eagles have had a good offseason, but the Dolphins, what they have done, both teams finished with the same record last season, 9-8. and eight. The Dolphins have added more talent than Philadelphia. Now Jalen Hurts to a tongue of Iloa, probably pretty even in terms of skill set at the quarterback position. But I think it's far more likely that Tua has a breakout season over Jalen Hurts. And I don't even think the Dolphins are behind the Raiders, the Ravens, the 49ers, and the Titans. Call me crazy, but I think the Dolphins are a better team. I think they're going to have a better record than those four teams. The Titans lost A.J. Brown. Is Ryan Tannehill the guy? No. In fact, I think Malik Willis might take over in 2023. The 49ers have a lot of question marks at the quarterback position. The Baltimore Ravens are a good team. I think they're going to have a good year. They did not make the playoffs last season. And then the Raiders are in the toughest division in football history. Are they even going to make the playoffs? I think the Dolphins more likely to make the playoffs than some of those teams. But Peter King is right when he has the Dolphins ahead of the Patriots. The Dolphins have had by far the better offseason. New England, you look at that team, and it just has way too many question marks around Mac Jones. They have not done enough for their young quarterback like the Dolphins have helping Tua Tungavailoa this offseason. Where would you slot the Dolphins in your NFL power rankings? Go down and let me know. Out of all the teams in the NFL, where do you think the Dolphins rank? Let me know down in the comment section. They might be a top 10 team. I think it's going to be a good year for the fence. Here's what Peter King said about Miami. 
They have the widest distribution of outcomes of any team in the league this year, said analytics cruncher Eric Eager of PFF. Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, Mike Gesicki are going to have are going to be hell for opposing defenses, and Tua should be better protected with Teron Armstead protecting his front side. But this will be a referendum season on Tonga Vailoa. Peter King's right. Will his arm strength be good enough for deep shots to those two great deep threats he has in Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle? New coach Mike McDaniel was great in San Francisco at divining the strength of his players. Just look at Debo Samuel. And he's going to figure out a way in the intermediate areas to get him and Waddle free to make trouble for defenses. The win for McDaniel will be making Tunga Vailoa the no-doubt quarterback of the near future for Miami and in passing New England in division supremacy. Two lofty goals, but one for a team that won eight of his last nine games, not to mention the Dolphins, I think, a far better team than they were last season with a coach that's hungry to win right away. And I think it's a good thing that the Dolphins are being doubted here. I mean, look, yeah, they're, they're ranked 16th out of 32 teams by Peter King. I think that's a little bit uh, low. I would have them right outside the top 10, if not inside the top 10. But you look at what the national media has said about the Dolphins, right? Basically, that all the moves they have made this offseason really don't matter if Tua doesn't step up, right? Tua, really the player that's being doubted the most on the Dolphins, if he can step up and have a good season, I think the Dolphins are going to prove a lot of people wrong. And they're going to have an opportunity early on to earn respect, right? It is a very difficult start to the season. They open with the Patriots. Let's say Tua comes out, throws four touchdown passes, Dolphins roll past New England, and then they go to Baltimore in week two and win in Baltimore and then come back for week three for that Buffalo game. Can you imagine the hype surrounding this football team if that happens? The Dolphins early on this season are going to have an opportunity to really prove a lot of people wrong and end up in the conversation right on top of that AFC East. Thanks for watching Dolphins Today. This has been Will Scott. Talk to you tomorrow. Go Fence.